Hi, welcome to Teen Pride Book Talks. My name is Lucy, and this is the program on AADL TV, where each episode I take a few minutes to talk about a young adult book that is both representative of and inclusive of folks in the LGBTQIA community. The book that I am going to be talking about today is called And Don't Look Back, and it is by Rebecca Barrow. This book is a thriller and a mystery, and it keeps you guessing until the very end. The book is about a girl named Harlow. She's 16 years old. She lives alone with her mother, Cora, and Harlow and Cora have always been on the move. They have moved every year, plus or minus some months, of Harlow's entire life. And in fact, when they move, Harlow has to assume a different identity. She has to have a different name than Harlow. She has to have a different look. She has different clothes, different hair, different makeup. So the book starts with a teacher calling on someone named Meredith. And this character who is Harlow doesn't respond because she's not used to that name yet. And she thinks to herself, wow, that's the first time I have not responded to my false name. So that's where the book starts. And Harlow is a little bit tired of this life. She's never really questioned it because it's always been what she's known, but she's just starting to really feel the toll that it's taking on her and she never has roots planted anywhere. She never really gets to make friends. And one of the biggest reasons why it's frustrating to her is that her mother has never revealed to her why they do this. So Harlow is Meredith for just a moment until Cora, her mother, wakes her up and says, pack your bags. We're moving again. Harlow never knows what it is that precipitates the move, what sets her mother off, what scares her mother. Is her mother running from something to something? So they get in the car and off they go, only this time they get hit by a truck. And Harlow's mother suffers fatal injuries, but not before she tells Harlow to go to a bank, locate the safe deposit box that she has been keeping another secret. So Harlow, hesitates to do this because she's always been hiding and she's also extremely distraught and she's just witnessed her mother die, but she decides to listen to what her mother is saying in this moment. And she goes to find the safe deposit box. In the box, she finds $15,000 in cash. She finds multiple IDs for herself uh, with all different names. Some family photos, she thinks they're family photos, she doesn't know but they have uh, three girls in them. And most importantly, the deed to a house in a town called Crescent Ridge. She decides that maybe instead of keeping her life secret and keeping hidden and running away from something, she might go towards something. She decides to go to Crescent Ridge. In her research about Crescent Ridge, she unearths this news article where she discovers that she had a maternal grandmother, her mother's mother, Eve, and that grandmother mysteriously disappeared when Harlow's mother and her sisters were teens. Harlow is more than ever determined to find the truth about why her mother has chosen this wandering, roaming lifestyle for them. She discovers when she gets there, this house called Severin House, it's this big, abandoned, dark house, not what she imagined as the cozy life for her mother growing up. And she discovers that her mother was one of three sisters and that this town, Crescent Ridge, is pretty small, pretty tightly knit. And when Eve disappeared, the whole town kept watch, wanted to solve the mystery of Eve's disappearance. Harlow starts to talk to people in the town to try and figure out more of the story, really to unearth her mother's life, but also to know more about her own family. And in the process, she meets a girl named Sloane, who works at a hair salon. And Sloane helps introduce Harlow to some other people that she can talk to, but Sloan and Harlow also start to connect. They're sort of flirting with each other and Harlow is getting pretty excited because she's never lived a life where she's allowed to be herself, where she's allowed to have any sort of relationship. And so she's hopeful that maybe something will happen between her and Sloan. The book goes back and forth in time between Harlow's existence in Crescent Ridge while she's trying to solve this mystery, learning more about these aunts 
and her mother. And then there are these chapters that go back to her mother when her mother was a teenager. And then you see that her mother also had a relationship with a woman in the town named Ruby. There's not really an explanation of when she had Harlow. It happened when she was a teenager, but who Harlow's father was, that's sort of just more of the mystery. And in the chapters, with Cora and her sisters, Christina and Clementine, there is this other element of mystery. They sort of skirt around their mother's disappearance. They seem to be doing okay as three sisters raising themselves. They don't really want the town to interfere at all in their lives. In fact, the relationship that Cora has with this girl named Ruby, she has to sort of keep from her sisters. It's not something she's really been allowed to do. And so as the reader, you sort of start to wonder, what is the real story here? What really happened with this woman, Eve, who disappeared? How did it affect the sisters? And what repercussions did it leave behind? And where are these sisters? So Harlow gets in touch with one of the sisters, Christina, and Christina comes right away to meet Harlow. This is the first time Harlow's ever known she's had family. It's amazing. Christina's married and Christina and her wife have a child. So this means Harlow has a cousin. So there are these good hopeful elements of this book, this family coming together and supporting each other and the way that Christina is just immediately there for Harlow is really one of the, the strong points of the book. But the other part of the book is this mystery that keeps unfolding layer upon layer and you kind of think you're getting a handle on it and then something else happens. There's a twist or a turn and you realize that someone else in the town was involved and that the whole town, Crescent Ridge, really has some connection to the mystery of Eve's disappearance. This book is about lies and silence and secrets. It's about family. It's about relationships and sort of blooming love. And it's about Harlow's own self-discovery, both as someone who she's never really known and as a queer Black woman and her self-discovery towards becoming an independent person. Rebecca Barra does an excellent job at withholding secrets until the very end of this book. And I won't tell you any more about what happens. I continue to be surprised, really, until the last page in a good way. This book truly is a thriller, but it also has real depth to it as far as the personal story of not just Harlow, but other women trying to navigate their way towards figuring out who they are. So that is called And Don't Look Back by Rebecca Barrow. And I thought it was a great read. Give it a try. Thank you for joining me.